In this Dragon's Dogma 2 video, we're going to be talking about the Warfare vocation. We'll go into how to get it, where to unlock it, what are the basics and the mechanics of how this class works, how to manage your stamina, what are some good combinations of classes to pair together, and we'll also be going into equipment and augments as well. So let's talk about how to unlock this vocation first. The first thing that you need to do is you need to head all the way down to the Volcano Island camp. This is near the southernmost part of the game's map, and you need to talk to a guy there. He's going to ask you to give him some new liquor, you will, and then he'll ask you for some more. And that's how you unlock the vocation, by giving him more new liquor. And the way to do that is to go to Bok Batal. There is a pig's uh, stand there that you'll try and get into and the door is locked. You can't get in in order to talk to him. He sells this. And the best way that I have found is if you just pick up the bags there on the bottom uh, below his door, and move them into the fenced area. The guards will usually attack you. If you defeat the guards, you can then go up and talk to them. You can buy this from them, and then you can head back there, give them to them, and you unlock this vocation. Make sure you talk to him thoroughly, though, because he will hand you the skill that you need for this, rearmament. If you don't use that skill, you cannot set up this vocation properly. So let's talk about the role of the warfarer in the group. Warfarers are basically a jack-of-all-trades class they can do whatever you want them to do, essentially. So the, the downside to Warfare is, is that they only have three skills to use between all the classes that they, or weapon types that they're using. So they're going to have one less skill than a dedicated, you know, vocation of some other vocation. So that's what you need to keep in mind. This isn't a huge deal for a lot of vocations. A lot of them, like Archer and Magic Archer, don't use a ton of skills all the time. They usually just use a lot of regular attacks. So this can be fine for some pairings. For other pairings, it can be absolutely devastating. So the role of your warfare is really going to be dictated by how you want to play it. And in that same vein, whatever pawn you want to use is kind of up to you because, you, you know, depending on how you really set up your warfare. They could be a hybrid between like a healer and a tank. It could be a hybrid between a healer and a DPS. Maybe you don't need a mage in your group if you decide to take on the mage duties and maybe you just want another skill to use that you can use in between using a mage, like maybe you want to have an archer so you can shoot some stuff and then toss out some heals now and then when needed and go back to shooting stuff. You find that more effective than casting spells and easier on your stamina management, etc. So let's talk about the basics of warfare and how this works. So warfarers can technically equip up to nine weapons and you can change the order of them in your inventory. And they can only have three skills though. So if you had theoretically nine different weapon types, then six of those weapon types wouldn't be able to use any of their class skills related to them. So I don't recommend doing that. Now you can if you want, because again, you can use the core skills of the class and the basic attacks, etc. If you even if you don't use the skills, and you can use that to your advantage on a warfare. However, I don't recommend doing that because you just aren't going to get the benefit from that. So realistically, you're looking at probably three classes or three weapon types max. That way you could have one skill from each, or you're looking at something like maybe two classes or two weapon types with two skills of one and one of another. That's probably how most people are going to play their warfare. Something else I want to mention too is that even though you equip nine weapons, or up to nine weapons, the heaviest weapon you have equipped is going to count towards your equip weight, all the other weapons will not. So technically, if you were like out on the landscape and you found all this loot and you didn't want to like fill up your bag and increase your carry weight you could just equip a bunch of weapons to take them off your carry weight as well so that's something to keep in mind but that kind of should like you know dispel any worry about oh what if i have like five weapons and you know now my carry weight's huge because i got to carry around all these different weapons that's not a problem for the warfare so essentially how it's going to work when you go to the vocation guild you're going to slot your three skills and you're going to slot the rearmament skill that you should have learned from the guy that gave it to you and rearmament is going to have to go on one of your skill slots. That's what's going to allow you to swap weapons. If you don't slot rearmament, you cannot change weapons. So there's really no point in playing a warfare if you don't slot this. So that's going to take one of your skill slots. So that leaves you three skill slots. And when you're on a weapon, if the skills that are on your bar don't match that weapon, you can't use them. So if you have a greatsword skill slotted or something like that and you're on bow, you can't use the greatsword skill while you're on bow. But then if you swap to greatsword, it'll become active and you can use that and then you won't be able to use the bow skill, etc. That's kind of how that works. So there's one really big advantage to Warfares, in my opinion, and there's also one really big drawback. The, the big advantage to Warfares is they can use any armor they want in the game, regardless of class. 
So you could play like a mage wearing heavy armor, or you could play an archer, a thief wearing heavy armor, protect yourself more. And that's really nice to have. You, you can use any piece of equipment in the game if you really like fashion and you don't have to worry about what class you are. Warfare is a good choice because you can basically wear anything, which is really, really nice. The downside is, again, that you have three skills and you cannot use any of the, you know, what I'm dubbing the master skills or the ones you learn from the meisters in the game, that the ones they teach you and they kind of glow just like rearmament. Those skills you cannot slot on the warfare. Some of the most powerful skills in the game are not going to be available to you when playing a warfare and that can really suck. So when it comes to stamina management, obviously, there's not a lot to be said here. If you've seen the other videos, I mean, it's the same things, right? Don't sprint around in combat unless you absolutely need to. Use your basic attacks when you need to. If you pick a class that has like good basic attacks, like an archer or maybe a magic archer, and then you want to save your stamina for like hard hitting spells, like maybe you picked sorcerer, you drop a nuke spell, and then you switch to magic archer, and you start unloading with your bow that doesn't use any stamina, that's a really smart thing to do. So try and keep that in mind when you're setting up your warfare as well. Also, again, try and keep light weight. That should be, you know, go without saying by now. And consumables can also be used to give you more stamina if you need. So usually in this section, I talk about what skills to use on a warfare. Keep in mind that warfares only have access to skills that they've unlocked on other classes. So if you haven't played other classes, you haven't locked all the other vocations, you won't be able to use the skills from those yet. Like if you have them, but you haven't upgraded them and you haven't unlocked their upgrades, you'll have to go play them in order to do this, which makes warfare, even if you beelined to it to get it early, not as useful unless you've already played a lot of the vocations in the game. So it's kind of like a vocation that most people aren't gonna play for a good while because it behooves you to go unlock other skills. And you'll see here that I have just tons of them unlocked, but most people, if they head straight for it, will probably be missing a couple of these or several of these. And really when you're talking about skills to use for warfare, you're talking about like what is a good combination of classes to use? One that I think is pretty decent, although it doesn't have access to some of the stronger hitting spells is Sorcerer and Mage. And this is because they actually share a couple of spells like High Leaven is a very popular spell for mages and sorcerers because of its fast cast time and decent damage. And whether you're on your Arch Staff or your regular Staff, you can still use that spell and then maybe you want to have access to like Anodyne and a heal spell and maybe one other devastating sorcerer spell or some combination of spells. That's a great way to like, you know, be able to support your group as a mage, but also deal more damage like a sorcerer would. It gives you access to both Anodyne and Galvanize. And I think it's a good pairing. Biggest downside again is that you don't have access to the some of the sorcerer major spells that can be really devastating. Another decent pairing is like Thief Archer, for instance. This is kind of like how the Strider played in Dragon's Dogma 1. If you want to recreate that, you can here. You can use the basic attacks of the Archer for most of your attacks, maybe like one Archer skill and then a couple of Thief skills. So you can hang back and shoot things in the face when you need to and then jump onto it and use things, you know, Thief skills when you're climbing up on a monster and stuff like that. That's a really good pairing also, in my opinion. If you kind of want to get that Strider gameplay from Dragon's Dogma 1. And there are a lot of other good pairings that you can do in this game. For instance, you could use like a spear hand and then like jump up on the enemy and then use the thief and just like attack its face and do all kinds of damage with it, like with some really devastating thief skills once you get up there. And you can just use magic spear hand to get up there quickly. And that works really well as well. Another interesting combo is something like Mage Archer, where you can like buff yourself with like fire affinity or ice affinity or lightning affinity and then switch to your bow and then just like shoot those, that type of damage, like set enemies on fire, etc. with your shots. Maybe use Tempest Shot to unload into enemies. That's a really nice combo. Maybe you have some mage spells as well. Maybe like you have High Haladum or something so you can clear, you know, debuffs from enemies, etc. But you can also use Anodyne when you need to heal. It's a great way to like kind of mix up your gameplay, uh, especially if you're playing like a mage and you find that like you don't just want to heal and use high leaven all the time. Um, then you can mix up with another class. I find that to work very well. I just find archers and magic archers exceptionally good for this class because they use a lot of like regular attacks, which frees up the skill slots for like other classes that they might want to mix in. I generally don't think that playing three classes on Warfare is that good. I would try and stick to two if possible, but you can if you want. And one thing I want to mention here, because I know it will be in the comments if I don't, is I tried pairing Trickster with some of these because my thought was, if you dump your Phantom out, grab aggro onto it, and then nuke with an AoE, like from another class, like Sorcerer, Magic Archer, or something like that, or even like Fighter, you could like cleave into them. 
um, it would be devastating. But the problem is once you switch from your sensor over to whatever other weapon that you're using for your other class, uh, that phantom will just drain health rapidly and die. And then it's gone and doesn't stay. So it doesn't work, unfortunately. Otherwise, I think Trickster would be even better than it is because that would be just fantastic. And then again, equipment-wise, you know, talking about what to use for this, well, obviously it's going to depend on what sort of setup you have, so... But I would recommend using heavier armor and more protection because that is one of the benefits of using the Warfare. And they also have two really good augments that are... you can be unlocked by playing this class. And these essentially make it so that your weapon skills take less stamina to use and that equip load plays less of an impact on your stamina. So those are both really good, so at least play Warfare just for those because those are really good on any build or any class. So that wraps up our video on Warfare. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I just wanted to explain basically how it works so you can decide whether that's like something you want to do and to get you thinking with combinations of like what classes can pair well together. You'll get a better understanding that as you play all the different classes in the game and unlock all their skills and see what's viable. So make sure that you play the other classes as well if you plan on playing Warfare because they're a big part of playing this class. And as always, if you have other tips I didn't mention, please leave them in the comments for other players to help them out. And if you have questions, leave them there as well and I will try and answer them as soon as I can.